What is local transport? Well, um, between formulaic talent shows and all of us taking selfies, um, I was wondering how else we can find some sort of entertainment. Um, and our immediate environment here in London is, you know, is teeming with voices, stories, and opinions on our world and how it turns and so on. And local transport is basically about bringing these minds together. Um, it's, a, it's a journey to create a kind of critical entertainment. So a place to explore ideas, a place to think, and a place to enjoy yourself as well, and also network amongst each other. So the first stop on this line is Dalston Anatomy. Um, so we're all familiar with the landscape of East London. We're also familiar with East London as the fastest growing part of the city and its consequent economic fallout and everybody's complaining about house prices and all that sort of thing. But we don't actually pay that much attention to, I guess, the effects on the kind of emotional landscape of the city. And I think that that's what we're really interested in tonight is bringing together some of those artists who have been exploring that. You know, what, what changes happen sociologically? As a, as a result of this, as, of this rapidly changing landscape, which you can, no one can keep up with. First up is the acclaimed work of Lorenzo Vittori and the poet, the angry poet himself, Sam Berkson. <laughs> I just say, but I was cycling here and I, I realised I didn't actually know where the Ace Hotel was, strange as that might be, given it's a massive building that I've been past many times. But I've never been here. And so I asked, I said, excuse me, to the group of people the side of the road who look like the kind of people you might know. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And I got this like, got this very dismissive talk to the hand kind of hand. And I thought, okay, maybe they're not English and they don't understand what I'm saying. But it then turned out, okay, they weren't English, but they knew where Ace Hotel was. Like they were, and they couldn't, eat, you know, I'm, I'm saying, okay, in London, you have to, you don't know what kind of nutter's going to approach you, I understand that, right? But don't be that hostile until you found out. You know, I'm saying a certain level of, of suspicion, that's fine, but hostility, outright hosti hostility when a man's trying to ask for directions, it's not on. Do you know what? Shoreditch didn't used to be like this, did it? 12 years ago, right? So... And in fact, this leads me nicely on to my next poem, because I, I was commissioned to write poems about Ridley Road Market. It was a great job. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's very, it's, it's easy there. It's a pound a bowl for poems in Ridley Road. It's really, just pick them up anywhere. They're no problem at all. And so I was looking for the common themes in this very diverse market. You know, Africans, Caribbeans, Afghans, Turkish, Pakistanis, old Cockneys who live in Essex. You know, all that kind of stuff. And, and there was certain common themes that emerged. And one of them was, it, it was this one. It, it, uh, this bowl was called, It Ain't What It Used To Be. And there will be, during the course of this set, a load of dodgy accents that I won't do very well. But, you know, that's, uh, that's not why I'm a poet. 20 minutes it took to walk the length of it. You couldn't move for punters. It was hard not to rub shoulders, weekends, weekdays, winters or summers. It ain't what it used to be. Forty years they've been selling the same. Yams, breadfruit, callaloo, ackee. Spittle feels like a supermarket now. It ain't got a character, no sense of family. Ever since the city boys moved them to Leighton, retail shopping just ain't what it used to be. There was a time you'd go down the club and could hardly get a table. Day trips, music, Christmas party. Just the other day I was saying to Mabel, seems like no one goes there now. Social life just ain't what it used to be. Fourth generation Ridley trader. All kind of eggs in a range of baskets. Keeping alive great granddad's legacy. But the family also used to do Hoxton, Well Street and Chatsworth Market. No, mate, it ain't what it used to be. When the Russians were in my country, they would buy in the market or talk in the street. Now you go to British, to American soldier. They point gun in your face before you can meet. Everyone is enemy to them. Occupations just ain't what they used to be. 
Farsi Afghan spice importer. He's seen a documentary about cosmology. Now scientists say the universe is expanding, but he reads the Quran and they've known it for centuries. How can an illiterate like Muhammad understand these things? The old days were holier. Spirituality just ain't what it used to be. People don't use the market no more. New shops and cafes sprouting all over Hackney. They'll spend £7.50 on a cake and coffee and they'll still try to knock us down a few pennies. Don't understand people no more. It ain't what it used to be. Does anyone know um, Leonard, Cohen's, Leonard Cohen's The Smoky Life? And the lyrics are, it's light enough to let it go, so let it go. So I got dumped through that song once, where someone texted me the fucking lyrics to that song to be like, it's loud enough to let it go, so let it go. Uh, which is really fucking depressing. Um, and so this is, a, this is called Cultivating. And when you offered that pained expression through a bus window, I suppose you would have already known that you were done. Something you would later blame me for, although you had already decided she would be your life. The messages, the language lessons. You were kind to say the foxes reminded you of me, but what you really meant was they walked lost when others were asleep. And when the fox gave birth in my garden, I watched them like rats suckle. She beneath shade of damp leaves blinking at daytime, unafraid to be in sight. Well done, I thought. You've come a long way. A very kind and very obedient audience. Um, the next song that I'm going to uh, introduce is also really depressing, but I imagine that, f that you don't know it as well. Um, it's by a singer called Cem Karaja, who's a Turkish singer. I don't know if any of you, anyone familiar? No, okay, just me. Um, and it's amazing. Um, so when they're ready and when you're all ready, I hope you appreciate the first 20 seconds of that. Karadudum, Thank you. There's something really amazing about being able to listen to play Turkish music in a room like this. Um, Cem Karadu is basically, he's a, he's a Turkish singer. He passed, I think, in the last 10 years. But he was considered like a revolutionary poet and a lot of his stuff was very theatrical. And I grew up listening to him. My dad loved him. My grandmother loved him. And... Um, I remember my dad, because uh, Turkish people are very fatalistic and they think that everything's mapped out for them. And I remember my dad saying, I knew the day that Cem Karaja died because I felt it. I felt the need to listen to his music in the car. Um, and to touch very briefly on what Sam was talking earlier about religion is that you don't actually have to be religious for religion to be put on you. And you don't have to be religious to be treated like you're religious. You don't have to be Muslim to be treated like you're Muslim and to be treated with a level of su suspicion in this country. And some of the poems that I'm going to do are going to lead on to that. My partner works in the city, unfortunately for all his sins. Um, and this is legitimately based around a conversation that I had with his boss. It's called Smolensky's. I am wearing the patterned leggings purposefully to irritate the straight cuts and tulips. Expensive in my hand, the wine no tastier than the ice cubes drowning inside. Well done for following your dreams is something they like to say but his boss made his way up from an estate and don't you forget it. Everyone is given a heads up out here, taking it offline, drilling and backfilling like the dentist who lives below me. He catches the tattoos on my arms, their Ottoman shapes, and in his best phone answering voice, he saved this one for last. Islam, sell it to me. Yeah. That's the fucking world that we live in. This is called Dear Boss from Smolensky's. I could smell my grandmother on Morris Street. A familiar smell of heat and sweat and Molochia, which itself smells of heat and sweat. And in the car garage under the arches, her smell walked with me. When the strange man tried to grab my legs on seeing the shorts I had braved for the first time this season, I heard her voice, saw my father, a child, run 
and my grandfather follow? Why have you stopped? I imagine he would have asked. So my grandmother tells him, tells us all really, for it was she who was the storyteller, that she would rather stand still than be made to walk behind any man. And her smell accompanies me home until I stir it into my tea with the wooden spoon she left me. It was her land they were busy fighting for and no one noticed the old thinning headscarves in her cupboard, cared for or wanted, and I drank the tea, remembering them neatly folded in my wardrobe upstairs. Yeah.